Yeah, nice. Jeremy is, is, is correct. Uh, geometry is art. Okay, so we're going to be talking about that. I want to I want to connect that for you. So maybe just change your view of it a little bit. Now, what we're talking about is steel constructions. We're constructing equilateral triangles. So I see the word in there, equal and lateral. So equal, lateral, same um, equal sides and angles. Okay. It's going to be inscribed, so we're going to put it inside within a circle. Bonus points we're going to have for doing this for a hexagon. Okay. Now, a hexagon, a regular hexagon is a six-sided. All sides are equal. You can see these tick marks. They tell me that those sides are all equal. Okay. So the main thing for this, though, is, is practicing and doing this. So that's all the intro I want to give, just so you have context of what we're going to do. So everybody, grab your, grab your compass and... You're going to create a circle with center A. So put A anywhere it'll fit on the page. Remember, don't make your circle that big. Don't make it go over the words. Just use the space you have in your notes and go ahead and make a, excuse me, just a circle, not, not anything inscribed yet. So here is my circle. And again, if you don't have anything under your piece of paper, it might be harder. You know, put, put like a, uh, uh, a book underneath it or something like that. Here's my circle around center A. I'm going to wait for everybody in here, assuming everyone at home is keeping up with it as well. Okay? So, Dana, we got to knock this out right here. Go ahead and start. And really keep up with this just because each step requires, um, requires you to keep the compass the same or change it. So I need you to keep focus on what we're doing. We're going to keep that compass the same, and I want you to just put a point on the circle, wherever you want, wherever you want. Put it right here. Think point. Okay. Now, if I kept the radius the same, which is the goal, I'm going to make my new arc from that new point. So go ahead, and it'll go right through the center because we have the same radius. And go ahead and make your, whoops, slip. Slip in. Get it. There we go. Make your new arc right there. Darker for you. Two darks. That's better that way. Okay. So what we've done is we picked a point. We know that this was the radius from the center. So when we create this scenario, we have two new intersection points. All right. And this is where the magic happens. Because this is where we have to change the opening of the compass and go ahead and from those two intersection points, find how far is that opening. How far is that opening? Just like that, you see? So once I get that opening, all I need to do to find where that third vertice of our triangle is, is I need to stake it at that vertice and just go ahead and make just a little mark. It doesn't have to be a big mark. It's just knowing, showing where that third vertice is gonna be. When we do the third vertice here, now we're ready to just combine Okay, everyone have a straight edge? Yeah, honestly, you could use like pencil. You could use anything for a straight edge. All right, and now we're just gonna connect all three points. The way that I connect points is I put my pencil on the point first. I bring the straight edge to my pencil, right? To the pencil, so it's already marked, and then I just have to align the other one, and boom. Do you need, uh, Stephanie, do you need a protractor? No. Okay. Yeah. And put it on the point, bring your protractor to it, Put it on the point, protract to it. You know, because you have to negotiate the, the width of your of your uh, lead and all that. So if you put it where you want it to be and then bring your protract to it, it already sets it up. You'll notice that you're not putting it, you know, your protract isn't a line, so it's the straightest line. You would need like a laser to do that, right? Because the, the pencil has some width to it. All right. How do we mark and show that these sides are the same. How do we show that they're equilateral? Little tick marks. So go ahead and put your tick marks on there. Boom, boom, boom. Now if I had, let's say, just just going in and showing what tick marks are here, a little bit, a little bit uh, next level here. If I had a rectangle, I could say that the opposite sides are the same. And I would put two tick marks for those two. Okay, so that's just where it's going. We've only been using one tick mark so far, but when we have like a rectangle, we would use two different sets, two and ones, okay? All right, everyone have this right here? Everyone have this in here? Yeah, pretty easy? Okay. 
Folks at home, anybody need me to run through that again? Maybe I'll just do it just real quick. Made a circle. Use the same radius and pick the point on the circle and made another arc. That additional arc, ugh, that additional arc gave me two intersection points. I find the distance from the intersection points and I find my third point by defining that same distance in this direction. Now I have equilateral. Boom, boom, boom. Easy. All right. Now this is how to do equilateral triangle. I think this is the easiest method. This down here for a regular hexagon is um, a six-sided shape, but really what you'll see is you could make an equilateral triangle from this method as well. In fact, they're gonna, they're gonna say this is like the second way that you can make an equilateral triangle, okay? So first, same as first, same as number one, number two above, go to make a circle uh, around center A and place a point on the circle. So again, you're making it so that it is appropriate distance that you'll be able to use. Go ahead and start on this one. We're doing circle. Whoa. See, when you fall out, just find that anchor point again. You can kind of feel it on the paper because it's it's a little indented. And I've, I've used this for another class, so mine, mine here is hitting a little bit worn out. Okay. Put a point on the circle. Here is the second method and how you make a, a hexagon. You're going to keep, I'll wait for folks to get it caught up here. Okay. You're going to keep the same radius. You see, I'm keeping the same radius. And how well you do this, you'll either end up at this same point as you go around the circle or you won't. Let's see what happens. Watch. I'm going to go ahead and stake it at the point I just created. I'm going to make my first little arc. And then what I'm going to do is keep working around the circle. Now I'm going to go to this, this arc I just made, make another one. And I'm going to go to that arc I just made. And you can make your way all the way around. And if you did it, uh, you know, if you did it super accurately, you should end up exactly at the point where you started. Let's see if we can get that, everybody. And uh, this class um, is shorter than other classes because there's not so much to it. So we'll do a few example problems after this, but we might have time for more uh, emoji Disney. <laughs> all right. Oh, I was off screen. Sorry, guys. So all I did here was I kept the same radius as my initial circle, and look what I did. I just started to stake it and arc it, stake it and arc it. Moving my way around the circle, stake it, arc it, stake it, arc it, stake it, arc it, stake it, arc it. And if you did it accurately, you'll end up at the same starting point. You end up there? Pretty, pretty accurate? Perfect. Now look, make some marks at these intersection points and I want you to think about what shapes you'll be able to make out of this. So we have six points here. So this could be our hexagon. It could also be what? Ooh, ooh, yeah. It could be a rectangle. That's good. It could be a rectangle this way and uh, that way. It could be a triangle if we skip. You see, that's why they call this the second way to make an equilateral triangle because they say, well, you could just skip them and go around it. So, but we were trying to make a regular hexagon. So go ahead and do the hexagon. And remember, put your pencil on the point you want to start at, bring your straight edge to that pencil, and then make your line to next vertices. So pencil, protractor, fine. We can do that all the way around. And uh, and for the last one, we're gonna we're gonna try to make as many weird geometric forms as we can. We'll get creative with it. So for this one, just make your regular hexagon. But there will be a moment where you'll be able to kind of put shapes inside of shapes, and we'll look together at at uh, this sacred geometry bit here as well. Okay, so get that all set up, and then. We will go on to a couple example problems, but not too many. Yes, yes, perfect. So uh, to show because it's a regular hexagon, we're going to put for the tick marks, we need to put them on every side. Boom, 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 boom. Because those distances are the same. And actually, huh, okay. How do you make six equilateral triangles out of this? 
Because look, this distance is the same. I kept the same radius, so that distance is the same. So what can you do now to make six? Yeah. To the center, kind of like spokes. Yeah, you can do spokes. So look, there's equilateral triangles even within this hexagon, right? So this is what, this is where, you know, the sacred geometry kind of starts. It's all related. All of this, all of these are the same, right? And it's not, it doesn't seem like a big deal, but it, it actually is like how things form, how things, the aesthetics, we'll talk about that in a little bit when I show the, uh, the tiles. But uh, at home, on a scale from one to five, how do you feel about this construction? And in here, how do you guys feel? Five, five, good, good, yep, yeah. all the way, good. We got fives at home, we got 4.5, we got some fives, excellent. Mostly fives, I think it's because we are used to using these tools, and if you haven't gotten them yet, you gotta get them, because now we're getting into territory, this can be too, too far to be able to, uh, you know, to get, uh, to get, caught up and I'll just let you know too if I wanted to make a 12 sided right 12 sided we know how to do that already we know how to do that because how do I break this angle in half what do I know already I can do what from these two points double fish right you see every time you want to break it you just keep doing double fish so then I know this line right this line would be the bisection and it would intersect here and now look what I have right I can keep breaking them up and I would end up with a 12-sided polygon, okay? So just remember, double fish always doubles everything. Hence the name, double fish. All right, here we go. You don't have to copy the writing down or anything, just follow along with me. Create an equilateral triangle inscribed in a circle with a radius AB. So just go ahead and on your paper, just go ahead and make a, B, you can make it arbitrarily however you like, but we're going to measure off of that. And I'm going to let you go ahead and get going on your own. I'll start it in a second, but I'm going to let you go ahead and make a radius A, B. And then use whatever method you want to make your equilateral triangle. I just showed you how both of those are, this, are similar. Yeah, good. Somebody at home just brought up how they feel like there are four with this because of the compass. Anybody else feel like they're getting used to using this thing, right? Making circles especially, that's harder. So don't worry about that. You're, you're doing well if, uh, if you understand how we're doing it, yeah. Oh, I just, I, just, uh, I just put a point there. You can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna say that's the center of the circle you're gonna make from there. Okay. So if this is my radius, stake it right there on C. All right, folks at home, keeping up. I'm going to go ahead and start working this out in about 30 seconds. So get as far as you can. Good. Yeah, and you can stake it wherever you want, but you do need to mark where the center is because that is important. All right, I'm going to start by looking at that distance AB. Looks like I got it pretty close. That's good. Stake it at your center, whatever you want to name it. I named it C. And then, and with this, I do kind of rotate my fingers. I do rotate it with them between my fingertips. So you can try to see about that. It's a little bit hard to lean it and get all the way around. If you could do both, you're doing great. All right. And then I'm going to make my point right here, actually. This first point that we do is not one of the vertices. This point is to find my two intersection points I need. So now we have our two, our two points. Okay. Go back in, find that distance. And then we're going to go ahead and off of one of those arc circle intersections, all we have to do is make a little mark right there. Okay. So I'm going to go up and right at that mark, put another vertice. Okay. 
And then what do we have to do? Connect the dots. Connect the dots. Connect the points there, the vertices. Remember that the first point we just decided to put is still out here. It's not included. It's not included. Actually, you can make like a kite. There's a shape that's actually a kite. It looks like this. That's called a kite. Old school kite. Right? That's if you were to include that. That's actually how you'd make a kite. But we don't do that. We're not doing a kite. But even, even that. Even that right there will we'll mark as all the same. Okay. Now I'm giving you one that's kind of like the homework assignment here because example two is to create an equilateral triangle with a radius 2AB. 2AB. Here's AB. How do we find one that's 2? We did this. This is like the first one where you have to like make a, a longer line. And then what are you going to do with that? I'm going to well. start like at this point right here. How do we find 2AB? What do you guys think in here? 2AB? What method should I use? Here's AB. Cut it in half. But we, we need two of them, though. So actually, I need twice as big as this. So I know that if I stake it here and make my mark, this is one of them. And then what do I do to make two? Do it again. Oh, look at that. Perfect. So this right here is 2AB between these points. And all I did was measure, measure this distance with my compass, made that, and then made another from that point. And now we have 2AB. So now construct one that's going to be larger. Larger. There's my radius. And this is just practice because it, it takes practice. It's nothing too different. I'm just doing it again. I'm making my... All right, so so this is real practice with the with the the compass. Tricky. All right. Okay. So uh, I want you to try it one more time. We're gonna put a point on the on the circle, and for this, you know, I'm keeping the same. I'm keeping the same opening. And this, if I wanted to do it using method two, I would just put one here. And then move, put one there, move, one, move, put there, keep going around till you get to the, the front. But I'm going to do it with method one. Do it with method one. So go ahead and stake it at the point you just made, and then go ahead, get it, get it. There we go. Now these two right here, those are two of the vertices for, for this inscription. Okay. So now let's go ahead and see how far did that open? How far did that open? Open that far. Okay. So since it opened that far, the distance from one of these points here to the other vertice is creating an equilateral triangle. Because look, that distance is the same as that distance. So once you find this third vertice out here, you have everything you need. And you might need to even use something else that's flat to make these connections. Uh, do your best. Okay, one. Two. And three. One, two, three. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So you know, it's just, it's just, uh, it's just keeping the compass as your measuring guide. You see how now, if you didn't have a compass and you're trying to like measure, you're trying to measure, man, that would get so tedious because you wouldn't be able to make it perfect. But as long as I keep this open the same amount, I know that they're going to be the same distance. So that's the key to this kind of more classic approach to it. All right, this is the one we're going to get creative with. So I say start by creating a regular hexagon, your size, whatever you want. And then I want you to keep trying to make more and more shapes inside of the circle. Okay, so folks at home, this is the last one. So I want everyone to give it a try. And I want everyone to try to make as many 
as many shapes as you can inside of this. So we're going to start with making a hexagon. Whoops. So you slip, slip it. Don't worry about it. You're, you're, you're just learning. So, you know, like this up here, how I messed up. Just leave it. It's fine. I messed up. But I got a circle there. And I'm going to start with one point on the circle for a hexagon. I'm just keeping the same radius. You see, it's the same radius. And I'm just going around the circle. I think I closed it a little bit. All right. But this one, I don't want you to stop with that. I want you to keep on making as many shapes as you can. Just connecting the vertices, connecting the, the corners of the vertices. That's really what we're talking about. And there's a lot of things you could do with it, actually. Make a six-sided star. Because I have my six vertices here now, and I could start to create shapes from them okay so here's my six vertices i'm going to start by just making a hexagon then to kind of fill it in with some triangles let's see what we got all right so at home i want to, uh everyone at home as well I don't want you to stop with the hexagon. I want you to kind of investigate what can you make that is interesting as far as shapes inside of the hexagon. Um, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do right here because now I can connect these. Okay. Maybe you connect these. This has a symbol of the star of David, the six sided star. Okay. So now I got that. Keep going though. Because I look here and I'm like, well, what happens if I connect these? Alright, this is getting where this is getting where it becomes more like of an artistic kind of Exploration. What can I make in this? Okay, so now I have this. Let me keep making another six sided star. And has anybody ever like really seen different uh, seen different flowers where if you look the petals, you know, they're they kind of make uh, geometry within the petals. Um, even where on the outside there might be five petals, then the next one in is three petals, and there's, you know, fewer and fewer. That is all based on this, this geom geometric principle, um, which I'm going to talk about in a sec when I show, when I show these, these tiles and these mosques in the Middle East. Pretty amazing. But if you ever thought about if you travel to another planet that had life, you know, what would the flowers look like? I don't know if you've ever thought about stuff like that, but it actually isn't as freeformed as you think because there are guidelines on how things are formed, what shapes, what shapes are possible are all based on these geometric ideas. Okay. So that turned out pretty good, but you see, you see how this is like not quite even. That actually um, is because I, I did hit on the vertices perfectly. So if I had a, like a thinner pencil here, I'd be able to do it more cleanly. But if you add up all the shapes, there's hundreds of shapes in there already. Okay, what else can I do here? Mm, I might be done. I want to see what you guys put. Yeah. 
mode, and then put one point on the other, one point on the surface. And then keep it the same radius. Keep the same radius, and push the point on that. And then just go around it, make a little mark over that one, make a little mark over that one. So um, actually put the point in that. Bring the stick to that point. Keep going around the circle, making marks. You'll be able to make the hexagon very quickly. Oh, I see. Oh, nice. Yeah, throw in some concentric circles. I think that's a good idea. Add some circles. Okay, cool, cool, And you'll, you'll get back to where you started. So now what you have is one, two, three, four, five, six vertices in the hexagon. Yeah, that's it. If you skip one, you'll be out of time. So the spacing of it is perfect if you use that method where it's the radius in the middle and then going around. And always, uh, before you start the circle, put a point that you can see in the mode of the circle. Actually, I can't tell you where it is. <laughs> okay. Is it? Okay, perfect. So now connect those points that you have on the circle and you'll have your hexagon. And that's really it. You know, like that's, once you get the hang of it, you start to kind of get intuitive about it. You know, you can keep going and make these, these more artistic endeavors. And I see that I have about six more minutes with y'all. So keep working on that if you, um, if you like. And then I'm going to just point to this and share this hopefully at home, y'all can see that as well. Let me see what I can see. Okay, you can't see anything. One second. All right, last little bit of the class. So, so this guy, I actually didn't read too much about him, but look at the tools he's using. Look at the tools they're using, right? They just have a compass. They have a straight edge. And what they're able to create, they design... They design this drawing right here. Okay? Look what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven sided. Seven sided, but look what's in the middle of those seven sided shapes. The double sided, you know, this is what we basically just made. Okay? So this is sacred geometry because look, they have uh, a six sided star, two triangles inverted. And then from there, what's created is a seven-sided shape, polygon. From outside of that, you have a four-sided star. And then out here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, a six-sided shape, right? It, and then a four-sided, it's, it's um, the reason why it's considered sacred geometry is it's how numbers overlap. And the patterns of how those numbers overlap, you can see it in a pattern. You can see it in a pattern, but it's also an aspect of just aesthetics. Okay, so let me show you where, where these are where these are located. That's the that's the ceiling of a mosque that is probably um, a couple hundred feet in the, in the air. So they 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 design this. So this what he's designing what he's designing is going to be on a domed ceiling. There's that aspect as well. And these mosques were created, you know. Uh, 1500 years ago, some of them are still standing, the ones in Istanbul and the Middle East, where it is, um, I, I think it's, it's, it's absolutely amazing how, how all this from just a compass and a ruler, right? So the last thing I wanted to say is I had kind of talked about if you went to a far off planet and you saw some other plants, like what do you imagine the plants would look like? And you might think that it's totally possible for it to be like anything. It could be like a cartoon, kind of like imaginative anything. But actually, the, the, the things in, in, in reality are bound by these, these shapes and combinations, right? So let me, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. What is this? What's that? First thing that comes to your head, what is it? Awesome. Triangle. Okay, I'll give it a little better. Two lines, or two dots in a line. What's that? It's face, right? 
it's a face. So usually if you put two, point, two uh, dots in a similar distance, you put even a line, you can even see what emotion, what emotion that's showing, right? Okay. Because when we are first growing up and we see like our parents, that whole impression of the distance between the eyes, the distance between the nose and the forehead, the nose and the chin, all these are the golden ratio. The distance between this digit, this digit of my finger and the rest of the digit, golden ratio. The distance between um, the wrist to the elbow, the elbow to the shoulder, golden ratio, right? So everything, everything that you see and that you could recognize as belonging in this world is based on the golden ratio. Art is created from that. Everything is created from that. So if you've seen a rose and looked really close, you know, there's, there's four petals or five petals, and then there's three petals, right? And then there's like some close petals. Even those numbers of how they're generated, or you ever seen like a pineapple, how like it's like perfect geometry? Those geometric patterns are related to Fibonacci numbers, to the golden ratio, to all these things. So where if you went to another planet and you saw some plants, they would also be bound by some of the similar rules. So the reason I like that, it kind of makes me feel connected where the entire universe is bound by these rules. And it's interesting, too, to see where art goes against that. Okay, So if you're an artist, you're learning about golden ratio. That's really what we're studying right now. And I hope that that's like at least interesting enough that when we get to math three and we talk about it in depth, it's, uh, it's actually pretty fascinating. It's actually pretty interesting. So, okay, final, final vote at home on scale from one to five. How do you feel about this lesson? What you think at home? And what do you think in here? You guys good? Yeah, it's easy. Yeah, okay, so uh, thanks for the votes. Looks like we're all fours and fives. Thanks for watching at home.